Gilgamesh Immortal was book three of the biblical fantasy saga, Chronicles of the Nephilim. After the great flood, the sons of Noah have settled the land of Mesopotamia. But unfortunately, the heart of humanity is basically bad, and we take that heart wherever we go. Also, one of the grandsons of Noah has a genetic strain of the Nephilim in his bloodline. So the war of the seed of the serpent with the seed of Eve has been delayed, but not forgotten. Furthermore, God has withdrawn his presence, leaving humanity to replenish the earth and the surviving watchers to reorganize and re-strategize their diabolical plans. Now into this God-forsaken post-Diluvian world comes a giant warrior on an epic journey, fighting gods, monsters, and men in a relentless search for eternal life. That mighty giant is King Gilgamesh of Uruk. Gilgamesh was one of the greatest kings of ancient Mesopotamia. He was a real historical king about whom we have no historical narratives. What we do have is the Epic of Gilgamesh, which is a mythical tale edited together from several legends about him. Now, according to the Epic, Gilgamesh is a giant born of God and man who oppresses his people for his own power and glory. But then one day, a wild man named Enkidu comes from the wilderness and challenges the king's abusive rule. Now, Enkidu is not as big as the king, but he is strong and mighty. The two fight, and Gilgamesh discovers his equal. Enkidu's simple but strong character impresses Gilgamesh, and the two become best of friends. But Gilgamesh longs for immortality, so they bar embark upon a quest for eternal life that takes them to a giant's forest, the mountain of the gods, and ultimately to a distant magical island to find the one man granted favor during the flood. Noah. Gilgamesh Immortal is an adaptation of the oldest written hero story in history, the Epic of Gilgamesh, and yet it is timeless in its universal themes of friendship, courage, the pursuit of immortality, and the meaning of life. Some people may wonder, what does the Epic of Gilgamesh have to do with Chronicles of the Nephilim, stories based on Bible heroes and fallen angels? Well, more than you may realize. Let me explain. In the biblical book of Esther, the name of God is nowhere to be found. Some say it was because God withheld his presence for a time. Others say it was because he was secretly working behind the scenes to accomplish his purposes. Now, just like the book of Esther, this time period right after the flood is another era of God's hiddenness, where he gave man over to the idolatry of his heart to worship and serve the creature rather than the creator. Gilgamesh Immortal is a fascinating epic of one man's pursuit of immortality in a godless world, but it also includes a twist that ends the flood narrative and sets up a new world for the next few books in the series. But I don't want to spoil the surprise, so you'll just have to read the book. If you want to understand the full depth and richness of the storyline that is going on in Gilgamesh Immortal, you will need to read the previous books first. Noah Primeval, and Enoch Primordial. Though the story is an epic journey of a new hero, Gilgamesh, it nevertheless is integrated in every plot point with the previous storyline that has been developing of the War of the Seed of the Serpent with the Seed of Eve. However, Gilgamesh Immortal is also a retelling of the ancient classic tale, The Epic of Gilgamesh. So those who have read the original epic will appreciate it that much more because I stayed very close to the original storyline. However, I did alter some of the meaning behind the story, as any good storyteller will do when retelling the story to their own generation. Heck, the Epic of Gilgamesh did the same thing when it retold the flood story of Noah, so I'm just returning the favor. But the alterations were germane to the integration of the Epic with the biblical storyline in a way that will both surprise and entertain the reader of both. Gilgamesh Immortal would not be a Chronicles of the Nephilim novel if I didn't share with you some of the exciting information I discovered while doing research for the story. So I've included an appendix about Gilgamesh and the Bible. Now, scholars have long discussed the similarities between the Gilgamesh epic and the Bible. There are reflections of the Garden of Eden story in Gilgamesh. There is also an entire section where a Noah character retells the story of the Great Flood that most of us are familiar with from Genesis. But a look at how Gilgamesh and Genesis both deal with this story, where they're similar 
and where they're different is a fascinating exploration of ancient stories that gives us a better understanding of what really may have happened in those ancient days.